Good day everyone, I'm Mom Shea Roxon and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Introduction to Linguistics Episode 1, What is Language? How do you imagine yourself communicating with other people without language? How would you express your thought, your feelings? Language is a tool so people in a community communicate with each other. Communication can be spoken or written, verbal or nonverbal, consisting of sounds, words, and grammar. In this episode, I am going to discuss the different definitions and views on linguistics to understand language better. At the end of this episode, the students are expected to define language according to the different sources, compare and contrast the components of grammar, explain the nature and origins of language, and share different views on human language. What is language? According to Fino Chiaro in 1965, language is a system of arbitrary vocal symbols which permit all people in a given culture or other people who have learned the system of that culture to communicate or to interact. According to Noam Chomsky, language is a set of finite number sentences, each finite in length and constructed out of a finite set of elements. Michael Holliday defines language as a system of meaning, a semiotic system. According to Muharram Ergin, in 1990, language is a natural means to enable communication among people. Bloch and Traeger define language as a system of arbitrary vocal symbols by means of which a social group cooperates. To Sapir, language is purely human and non-instinctive method of communicating ideas, emotions, and desires produced by means of voluntarily produced symbols. Let's have a preview of the major branches of linguistics. We have phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. Phonetics is the study of individual speech sounds. Phonology is the study of phonemes, which are the speech sounds of an individual language. These two heavily overlapping subfields cover all the sounds that humans can make, as well as which sounds make up different languages. Linguists use the International Phonetic Alphabet, or the IPA, to determine the sound, especially words with the same spelling but different meaning. Morphology is generally attributed to the German poet, novelist, playwright, and philosopher Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, who coined it early in the 19th century in a biological context. Morph means shape, form, and morphology as the study of form or forms. Morphology is the study of words and other meaningful units of language like suffixes and prefixes. A morphologist would be interested in the relationship between words like dog and dogs, or walk and walking, and how people figure out the differences between those words. Syntax is the study of the set of rules governing the way that morphemes, words, Clauses and phrases are used to form sentences in any given language. All languages have underlying rules of syntax, which, along with morphological rules, make up every language's grammar. An example of syntax coming into play in language is Eugene walked the dog versus the dog walked Eugene. The order of words is not arbitrary. In order for the sentences or sentence to convey the intended meaning, the words must be in a certain order. Semantics is about the meaning of sentences. Someone who studies semantics is interested in words and what real-world object or concept those words denote or point to. Pragmatics is an even broader field that studies how the context of a sentence contributes to meaning. For example, someone shouting fire has a very different meaning if they are in charge of a seven-gun salute than it does if they are sitting in a crowded movie theater. What are the characteristics of language? Arbitrariness. Different people use a different set of symbols. So, for example, the word symbol for a cup in French is tasse. 
but in Portuguese, it's copo. In short, there is no direct relationship between a particular word and its meaning. Duality. Example, how the word cat is formed by the combination of three speech sounds, the consonant C, the vowel A, and the consonant T. These speech sounds at the primary level are meaningless if they are uttered in isolation. The secondary elements must be combined to form meaning. Systematicity. Regularity and order are essential for language to work properly. For example, we realize that the utterance the first snow of winter is appropriate, whereas the combination snows winter first the of is not. Structure dependence. Language appears to have an underlying pattern structure and humans appear to intuitively recognize these patterns. Productivity. The fact that language is stimulus-free and that it is flexible leads to the notion of productivity, that language can be used to construct an infinite set of new and meaningful utterances. These utterances are novel in that they may never have been spoken before, and yet they are meaningful and readily interpretable by other people. Displacement Language also allows us to think of and communicate about something or someone that is not immediately present. So, for example, we can refer to our new car even though it's not actually in front of us. Similarly, we can discuss last night's football game even though it has passed. Specialization Language allows us to substitute an arbitrary word for a physical action. For example, a police officer instructs a crowd to move along, has used language to substitute for a physical action of driving the crowd forwards. Cultural transmission. One of the most obvious examples of this is a formal teaching in our schools, the majority of which is undertaken using spoken language. The child who sits on a parent's lap and listens to stories of family traditions and events is also learning through language. The language of a particular society, therefore, forms part of the culture of that society. Creativity Language is resourceful because of its duality and its recursiveness. For example, this is the cat that kills the rat that ate the malt that lay in the house that Jack built. What are language universals? And why do language universals exist? Yes, there is a vast number of languages all over the world. And it seems that they are all different from one another. However, the majority of linguists propose that all languages share certain universal principles. These principles are a set of rules referred to as universal grammar. Finnegan wrote the following concepts in answer to the question, why do language universals exist? Original language hypothesis. All of the languages in the world derive historically from the same language. Universals and Perception Languages are systems of how all humans perceive the world and conduct verbal interactions, acquisition and processing explanations, psychological explanations that have no physical basis, social explanations, basis on cognition and others reflect the facts that language is a social tool. Now let's find out the importance of language universals. First, universals state what is possible in human language and what is not. They help us to understand brain and principles that govern interpersonal communication in cultures. They help us to understand what, in the human brain and social organization of everyday life, enables people to communicate through language. Can you describe how animals communicate? How does their communication differ from the communication of human beings? For more explanation in language universals, please click this link and move forward to frame 24 minutes and 14 seconds.